in elementary school, I decided that I wanted to be a scientist, but not that I could be a scientist. The thing that I'm most driven towards is pursuing a more complete story about shorebird migration and shorebird conservation. I'm interested in identifying regions of the genome that are associated with survival. Mountains are especially important for conservation because they often harbor a disproportionately high number of species. My main focus in my research is studying malarial parasites. And these parasites live within other organisms. And so where they go and what they do is dependent largely on their hosts. And in my case, those hosts are birds. I'm interested in the possibility that divergence in vocal communication could lead to divergence in species. The value in something like understanding how fairy wrens communicate is that you're starting to understand some beautiful intricacies of, of nature. One of the really amazing things about the student community at the lab is how diverse they are. We have scientists, we have English majors, we have computer scientists, we have engineers, and they're all here for a reason. They're here because they care about the world. And they care about the people in it and they care about the natural world in particular. And so they come to us out of their own desire to make a difference. I remember sometime in middle school I was reading in a textbook about an extinct bird called the moa that sounded absolutely amazing and it was a giant bird as big as or bigger than people and it was extinct, it no longer existed. This was just shocking that such an amazing creature existed that I would never get to see because people had eliminated it. That started to get me thinking about what I could do to protect species. There's so much that we don't know about this planet and about the organisms living on this planet. It's amazing. Sometimes when you're younger, I know that when I was younger, I thought, oh, everything's been explored. Everything's been mapped. We know how many species are in this area. We know what lives here. We know everything. We absolutely do not, and there's so much that we need to learn. I think the first time that I actually held a chickadee, that's when I realized that you could actually do this. You could go out into the field and study birds. You don't have to be confined to a lab setting. You can actually study the birds in the wild. I've always been really interested in bird song. My mother's a musician, and I'm a musician as well. And it seemed like a perfect match to be able to go into the tropics and to actually study something that I'm, I'm interested in. The power of the lab is in our sophistication across disciplines. We have world-class scientists and world-class communicators and world-class artists and world-class engineers and definitely world-class students. And if you put all that together, then you're actually linking people with opportunities that not only have they never had before, but they never even dreamed of having before. I work on this endangered bird called the Florida scrub jay, and I'm hoping to use it as a model to try to understand fundamental questions in population and conservation genetics. If you just look around any part of the world, you're going to see cornfields or cattle, soybean. It's just a huge land use. And so figuring out how to do that in a little bit better way could have really wide impacts. How does one species turn into a dozen species? And what happens when divergent populations come back into contact? Do they hybridize? Do they not? And if they do or don't, what sorts of communications are facilitating or hindering that. The strange thing about this species is that males will form little subgroups where the individuals within one group will sing one type of song and individuals in another group will sing a completely different song. It's as if you have a bunch of birds speaking French here and a bunch of birds speaking Spanish here. There are these army ants that kind of swarm on the forest floor, and these ant birds come in and eat the insects that they scare up. They'll just do that for hours, and it's just like a full-out buffet for them to eat from. 
I get to have the freedom and the flexibility to explore like I've always wanted to do. But I also have a lot of guidance from people who've been on this path. Our students are masters of challenging themselves, whether they're in the field in a remote part of the world doing something that no one's ever done before, or they're in the molecular lab sequencing a genome and deriving from it patterns that no one has ever seen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but they learn along the way and they're extremely resilient. When you read a scientific article, you just see the product of somebody's work, and it doesn't really make mention of how many screw-ups they had in their methods, or how many hundreds of data points they ruined, or how many of their sample organisms were just horribly uncooperative. And that stuff happens all the time. There was a steep learning curve when I first transitioned to genomics. The data files you get are too big to open. You can't actually open them and read them. So my first year, I spent learning how to program. In my study site, you can go from a subtropical forest to an alpine meadow in a matter of 15 miles. Unless we know exactly how ecosystems are shaped, we cannot do smart conservation. You can't save a species without knowing more about it. You can't convince people who maybe don't care that it's important unless you can provide data. The thing that's made me absolutely sure that coming to Cornell was the right choice has just been the huge diversity of resources and people that are here to kind of show you what's possible. When you train a student, you're catching someone at the earliest part of their career who is going to go on and for the rest of their lives have the potential to make a difference. Got her. Hold. When we train a student, that person will likely spend the rest of their lives taking some component of what they've done here and leveraging it out in the world to do good things.